Good morning, everyone. For this season at church, our theme has been a time for change, looking at the poem from Ecclesiastes 3 in the Old Testament of the Bible. Today's couplet tells us there is a time to keep and a time to throw away. Recently, my parents cleared out their attic and they found a lot of my old things which they'd kept stored there for a very long time. Included in the dubious delights was this beauty. Uh, it's a project that I did in primary school. Look, look at those colours. That was nearly 30 years ago. Now, I had totally forgotten about this and seeing it again brought back a load of memories from my school days. And I bet all of us have things like this. Reminders of people, places and events that should be remembered and celebrated. My schoolwork holds no real importance beyond sentiment, but there are some things that have immense value. While browsing an antique shop back in 1992, Father Jamie McLeod bought an old portrait for 400 pounds. He took it home, hung it on his wall for 20 years, and then out of curiosity, he took it to the Antiques Roadshow in 2012. That 400 pound painting was recognized as a masterpiece by Baroque artist Anthony Van Dyck and valued at 400,000 pounds. That was something worth keeping. When Jesus taught people about God, he used parables, that is stories with meanings, to help explain things so people could understand better. Or in some cases, not at all. In Matthew 13, Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. And when a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy, went and sold all that he had and bought that field. Then immediately after that story, Jesus makes the same point again. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought that. Through these two stories, Jesus is expressing that God's kingdom, not an actual place, but the reality of God working in the world, is so valuable that people give up everything else in order to get it. God's kingdom is something worth keeping. But there is also a time to throw away. Along with my memorable school project, in mum and dad's loft was a load of English and maths exercise books with nothing but scribbles and sums inside. After being out of sight for so long, they no longer held any value and have finally been recycled. I'm willing to bet most of you watching have spaces in your home that become a temporary resting place for stuff you don't know what to do with. Um, things just sit there for years. You know the places, a junk drawer, a spare shelf, the bags under the stairs, the garage or shed, even that spare room you're planning to decorate someday but it's currently occupied by a lifetime of stuff. My neighbour emptied his attic last month and filled a whole skip, including an entire roll of brand new carpet he bought 20 years ago and has never used. The truth is, sometimes things outlive their usefulness. In addition to physical clutter, we build up emotional, spiritual and psychological baggage. We hang on to phony philosophies, ruinous relationships and antagonistic attitudes. These things should be examined and thrown away. But how do we do this? After his death and resurrection, the disciple Peter wrote this about Jesus. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Some translations say uh, worries or burdens. Cast them off, throw them away because Jesus cares. Using a term for plowing, Jesus himself made the same point. He said, come to me, all of you who are weary. My yoke or harness is easy and my burden is light. But personally, I love what the one time fanatic turned Jesus champion, Paul wrote in Hebrews 12. He said, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us fixing our eyes on Jesus the pioneer and perfecter of our faith in other words anything that holds you back from being the person God created you to be throw it off give it over to Jesus he cares so looking back what should you keep hold of the advice Paul gives to the church in Philippi is really useful. He says, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. 
That's a great litmus test for us. If something brings life and points you towards God, keep hold of it. And what should you throw away? Well, anything that holds you back from knowing God. Worries, anxieties, old relationships, attitudes, unforgiveness, whatever. My prayer today is that God's Holy Spirit works in you, inspiring you to keep hold of the promises of God and to remember the good things that he has done. And also that you have courage to identify and throw away the things that are holding you back from a deeper relationship with him. Amen.